Hey everyone, this is Andrew at Plainview Farm. Now I know it's been a little while since I've done an animal video, so I figured I would take a few minutes and show you what all the critters have been up to lately. Charles and Bella have been uh, our landscape crew, at least for today. We've got them out here in the yard munching on this March grass that's started to take off um, because of all the warm weather we've had. The pig pens have all been relocated up just a little ways from where they were. That way they could get to a dry, fresh spot, especially after the issues we had with uh, Big Dan, the boar down there on the end, uh, down here. Um, especially the issues we had with him um, having a parasite problem a couple months ago or a month ago, whenever it was. Curly Sue and Scarlet. I don't know if you can tell or not, but their bellies are hanging quite low. They should be having piglets sometime, oh, by the end of this month, first part of next month, if my calculations are correct. And then these are all the pigs that are gonna be going to butcher or have been spoken for uh, to go to butcher. And then of course, Big Dan on the end down here, doing his thing. He wants more food. He thinks I'm gonna give him more food anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now we're gonna feed a little hay and see what the goats and the cows are up to on the other side of the farm. John Deers. <laughs> Kidding. So now that everything is starting to green up, um, one of the things I have been planning to do, actually been going to do for several days now, just never got around to it, was to pin the cows into a small area. I hadn't really picked what area yet. I decided actually to put them over here by this burn pit. That's why I burned it out, uh, since I was gonna have them over here. That way they wouldn't be so curious um, to go check it all out at least uh, and potentially fall down in it um, but I'm gonna put them over here that way they can stay over here and I'm gonna feed them hay probably ramp up the amount of hay that I've been feeding them or that I'm going to feed them and uh, that way the grass can take off and grow I've got enough hay that we should be able to get well into the month of April without any trouble at all so uh, the plan is like I said to get to get this all, uh, or to get the cows off of it so the grass can be growing. And actually, I know I mentioned in my video at the beginning of the year that I had planned to build fence, but we we're probably gonna kick that off down the road. Um, well, plans have changed again, and I've reversed course. Uh, so something I'm planning to do in the, the coming weeks is to make a video or make a series of videos about planning out a grazing system and that's actually what i'm going to do i'm going to plan out a grazing system for the south side of the field and then we're going to cross fence this all off uh, with an alleyway down the center and i'm going to talk about that uh, as we we get closer to that but like i said that's one of the things that i'm planning to do coming up very soon and we want to get the cows locked into this little area right here i'm going to pull up a a, a piece of poly or a, a, some poly wire put up some poly wire on a reel and trap them into this little area over here anyway they want some feed or hay i guess hay is feed didn't it This area right here that I'm putting them in, actually I had the pigs in a couple years ago. Uh, it was kind of rough through here, it was grown up. 
and uh, it's starting to grow back in grass now so I'm gonna try to concentrate the hay that's why I've decided to put them over here uh, concentrate the hay in here and maybe get some seed down out of these bales of hay that is some decent grass and, and get this growing uh, somewhat maybe try to get get some pasture built back up here quality better quality pasture anyway excuse me girls excuse me girls excuse me girls watch out old sambo Excuse me. Throw the hay around a little bit. That way they don't concentrate all in one spot. I think this is called a potato fork. I think. Anyway. I've discovered it's really great for throwing hay around, at least the way that I do it. I think they've all come through the winter fairly well, especially having <clears throat> having calves on them. Um, you know, they they need to do a little body condition work, but um, you know, the winter's hard if you have fall calves. Winter winter it can be hard on cows. So I think we've I think we've come through all right. You can see old Dan, he's her uh, <laughs> Samson. He's rubbed. Uh, bear spot in his shoulder starting to rub a bear spot in his shoulder so we're probably going to have to do something about that but like i said otherwise they've come through the winter fairly well of course the goats have wintered well also i'll show you in just a minute what i mean by that All right, I think if I give them much more than this, they'll probably, probably just lay in it. So we'll feed them some more tomorrow. I think this will probably be good for now. All right, so I'm gonna take the tractor back, park it and grab the truck and uh, bring everything out here and we'll pull up our poly wire. Get the cows set up to stay here for a while. All right, whoa, hang a glove on there. To the pickup. Gosh, look at that all over the windshield. That's what I get for parking under a tree. Look at all the little goats. Like a rock. Okay, so. Post driver, have a post. Uh -oh. Bunch of them and a locked jaw. 
insulator. All right, so this T-post is going to be my pivot, I guess, uh, if you want to call it that. It's going to be where I make my turn. And instead of, you know, driving a bunch of these fiberglass posts, kind of making a circle, I figured, oh, hit myself in the face. I figured I would uh, just drive a T-post, put a lock jaw on there, and uh, be done with it. So this is a very scientific process here. I think, I think about here we'll do. Yeah, I'm gonna have to move the truck, but that'll be all right. Actually, let's move closer to you. Yeah, that'll work. That's good enough. So lock jaw insulators, um, I know that there are folks that do not like these, <laughs> do not care for them at all, and that's fine. I mean, I, I'm not you know, here to debate anything like that. I'm just saying that for me, they've done well. And one thing is I always buy the white ones. Um, you know, I've always been told that the white hold up better to UV protection for whatever reason it may be. Um, you know, whatever, color you want to get them in uh, you can get them in I guess but but I've always I've always been told that white or black uh, will they will last the longest and some of these that I have out here they've been here for at least four years and I've never I've never had one break on me so uh, you know I don't know I don't know if, if I'm the exception or what but uh, but I, I'll tell you, I've, I have had good luck with them either way. But one of the reasons that I like them is they go on a post anyway, and I'm not selling these. I'm not trying to peddle these to you. So just know that um, I'm just showing you what I use. And I, I like that you can put them on a post any direction um, from any side of the post and they will, they'll go on, they'll stick. So what I'm doing here, like I said, I'm using this as like a pivot or a corner and I'm going to come down here about the height that I want, put that on there, and then I will be able to put my poly wire in here, uh, in this lock jaw, and make my turn, and then go on about uh, about my pro project here with, uh, with my fiberglass posts. Anyway. I'm as strong as I can be, like a rock. All right, gonna pull forward. So I have my reel of poly wire, my fiberglass post with clips on them, and my hatchet for uh, driving them in because I didn't bring a hammer. I'm just going to drop a post ever so often as I make my way around. And then on the way back through, I'll drive them in. And we will try to hook in one-handed into the lock jaw. There we go. And we'll make our way up the hill to the other side. The other fence, I guess. So I'm putting this fence, uh, or this hot wire, at a height that it'll keep the cows and most likely the calves in. Uh, but the goats will be able to go 
in and out as they please. I'm not worried about the goats stunting the grass out here. That's not going to be a problem. They, the way that they nip at stuff um, and browse, it should not be an issue. <clears throat> it should not be an issue at all. Excuse me. So as I mentioned whenever I was feeding hay earlier, I have enough to get me at least to the middle of April. Um, I'd like to get to the 1st of May, but if I don't, I think, I think I'll be all right, especially if I can get my fences built um, the way that I'm wanting to, uh, to get my grazing system set up. So, but like I said, I'll have more on that later. Get that hooked on a hot wire. I think I'll go ahead and add this last post right here just for a little extra insurance. So as you can see here, the lock jaw insulator, the way it goes on the post there, uh, and actually I'm sure there's several insulators you can do this with, but anyway, the way that this goes on the post, it allows me to turn the corner right here, basically turn this into like a, a corner post. Uh, yes, I did have to drive a T-post, but uh, it allows me to just kind of keep things squared off and not have to make a big wide round circle. All right, so now to the baby goats. Um, we had 10 baby goats born uh, over a span of, I think five, six days, something like that. And everybody seems to be doing well. Actually, I guess we had, let me rephrase that, or, or let me say that again. We had 11 baby goats born over a span of uh, five or six days, and one did not make it. Not exactly sure what happened, um, it just didn't, didn't seem to, uh, to ever really get going. So those things kind of happen, unfortunately, but we do have what appears to be 10 healthy baby goats right now. Uh, everything seems to be going well. They seem to be doing good. And I guess baby goats generally don't need people to talk about them. So I guess I'll, I'll leave you with them. As always, I appreciate you watching. We'll see you next time.